in today's video we're going to do a repetitive uh, impact analysis in which an object will basically impact repetitively on a wall or any other of object and we will see how it looks like as you see in this case so that's what i'm going to show you today in this short video so i'm going to create first the ball again i will make everything in 2d so you see i'm making a 2d wall which is deformable so i will make it as an elastic material it's just a rectangle in this case again if you want more details on all of these things then you can go back to my lectures uh, which is on which is which is suggested on the top here so i have created a wall now i'm going to create an object again i'm just making any arbitrary object depending on your problem how you you can define your own objects and geometries the only option only thing which you will learn here which will be new is how you can have a repetitive impact of an object to another object so it could be hammering a wall or a floor or you're doing a forging which could be like impacting it again and again so it's basically that kind of application so i'm making a hammer sort of thing which looks something like this once i have done that i will just create a sec uh, i will first create a sketch and then i'll create a 2d geometry of it so that's what i've done here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the material module or properties module and i will define the material properties for each of them as i do as i normally do so So let's go and define the material properties for wall first in this case we are starting with explicit as i tell told in the start so i'm going to, i have to define the density i'm using steel density so i'm assuming the wall to be approximately of any type of steel again i'm keeping everything general you can also define plastic part as i showed you in the in the other videos of mine especially related to damage so you can also include plasticity if you want to see some plastic deformation for the, this hammer type object, I'm again defining the density. In this case, I'm going to use a density which is more close to maybe aluminium or something. And also similarly, elasticity is depending on, similar to soft aluminium, sorry. So that's what I have done here. Now I will assign them to a section and then I will assign these properties to individual components. So in the first case, I'm selecting wall and then i will define the same for this op for the object i'm calling it object you can call hammer or whatever and hammer will have the properties associated with the armor okay. now i will first assign properties for to this object and i will use the section object which has object material properties and the same you can do for the wall Next, you go to the assembly, and again, we have to, more than two components, or even one component, you have to instance them here. So that's what I'm going to do, and I want to keep a distance. So I'm going to select auto offset option here. So you can see it can be arranged one uh, a distance from each other. And now I will just translate this hammer to a suitable position. Again, I haven't given you any problem definition, so in based on your problem, you can select a distance. I will try, let's say, 500 first and see how far it goes. I want to keep this area and this area to be hitting the wall so this was too much so it's going too far it will take a very long time so still it's too much because you know for further the distance longer it will take to reach depending on the velocities so i have brought it to this kind of a distance which will give which should be okay in my opinion but again depending on your problem you can select that again in the in the course i have already explained in detail how this can be done so I am trying to measure the distance now between the two again if you know the distance you can precisely set that keeping after measuring it but in this case I'm just trying to get an estimate of the distance. So it's around 1.5 or something so this will give me a kind of a indication as well how long depending on the speed how long it's going to take to impact the wall now i'm going to go and define the next step as you know we are doing dynamic explicit as a starting point so i'm going to select dynamic 
explicit and then the genome is on I will keep everything as default I'm not changing anything at the starting point as I told you and as I recommend to new users that always use default options I go to the loading interactions and now I have to define the contact because there will be two objects coming in contact with each other in this case I can't use general because it's a 2d case so I'm gonna to have to define surface to surface contact so I will select the first surface and now I'm going to select the second surface which will be surrounding this whole hammer because it can be in contact with any surface if it if something happens let's say or orientation of this thing rotates, rotates or something like that I don't have any interaction properties until now so I'm going to define that by pressing this button and I'm defining contact properties in this case if I know the friction coefficient I can define a friction coefficient or in this case I'm using frictionless and also I'm using hard contact for normal behavior again I have already explained that in the course but if you have any question get back to me so we'll go back to that video so I have selected default options again I didn't change much you can see minimum input from my side I'm just selecting options which are already there in abacus now I will fix the wall from the bottom again depending on your case you have to select or assume your boundary conditions I'm assuming that the bottom is fixed rest is all free so I'm just constraining it in u1 and u2 direction which is x and y directions respectively and i'm going to define a force or let's say I apply a pressure and i will apply a pressure and that pressure will be like a pressure pulse so it will change as time goes on the problem with this kind of analysis is this data has to come from experiment so i will pause it here and I'm giving it a value of 10 and then I will define an amplitude function which will control how many times it impacts but the problem with this kind of case is if you have given let's say 10 megapascals as a pressure then you will apply it. so when it goes in this direction it's fine because you have a resistance and it will stop but when it goes to the reverse cycle you don't know how far it's gonna go right because we are not controlling any displacements here so force control tests can be very tricky when you are simulating so uh, most of the time you end up doing some kind of displacement control test but let's try and see what happens you know just to give you a flavor of that but if ever you would apply this velocity or a displacement here it's a function of time and I will show you how you define it as a function of time now right now it's instantaneous so it applies like an impact and it moves it in this direction in one direction but we want it to move in this direction and then change the direction of the pressure so it's like hammer you hammer it and then you move it up and then again bring it down to the floor something like that okay so let's continue now so I have to define an amplitude now <clears throat> so there are again many different options available you can define your own function which can come from that experiment if you have done an impact test or something and you can create a table in which you give the value of the curve or function of this this whatever pressure or displacement you're applying as a function of time you can define that you can also have an equally spaced kind of thing you can define a periodic function where it could be a function of sine and cosine function so again there are many different options here you can have a look at a book documentation and you can play around with that I prefer to have my own functions because I can have any function so I go to Excel or MATLAB and I create my own function or curve and then I give, bring that data and paste it in the tabular form here so I will show you that in today's video how you do it so I'm gonna go with that so uh, what I will do now, I will go to the Excel and I will create a sine function, which will be like a wave function. It will go on the top and then it will go negative side. So from plus one, zero to one, plus one, then to minus one and then, then to my plus one. So it's like a cyclic loading. So that's what I'm creating here. In this case, so I will give an increment of let's say 0.1 for time. And if your time increment in, in abacus simulation is smaller than that then abacus will automatically interpolate between the two values which are given to you so let's say if your time increment was 0.11 then it will interpolate between 0.11 and 0.22 automatically and i will do i will just use a sine function as i told you in this case so and i'm going to apply only two cycles this means my hammer will hit the wall twice and in the third cycle I will just stop the simulation so I'm gonna run it up to a let's say total time of 13 seconds or 13.2 seconds which is basically it gives me which, uh, for the demonstration purpose it is okay to use that because you you will be able to see at least two impacts in a cyclic way in this way you can apply any cyclic loading in, in, in any case 
it's not only for this but you can apply anything which is varying with time whether it's boundary condition or loading you can apply that so i'm just going to show you how it looks like this function and you can see it's gonna basically go this way so it will impact then it will go retreat then it will again impact then it will retreat and then after some time before the contact my simulation will stop at 13.2 seconds and you can see these values are at an interval of 0.1 so i have defined if you remember the pressure as 10 so at 0.1 it will be 10 times 0.1 at this point it will be 10 times 1 so it, this is the amplification factor depending on the time in the simulation it will automatically get that point and multiply it with the value which you have defined in abacus so now i'm going to take this value here these values here and i will go back to my abacus copy it and i will take it to abacus and i will paste it as a tabular form in a tabular form So I select the tabular option, it will give me an option to select, again here you have to pay attention that I am selecting the step time, this is very important because if you are having a multiple step analysis, then you can select a total time and you can select a step time, in this case it's only one step so it doesn't matter, but in, in reality if you have multiple steps, so pay attention to that as well. So I'm going to paste it, as you can see I have pasted it here and then I can go. Also another important aspect is total time is 13.2. So when I created the step, I changed, I kept the time period to be one. So I need to go back and change that as well. I will show you how you can do that. So now we'll select the amplitude function here. So now my force or pressure in this case is applied as a function of time. Another important thing is I need to fix my hammer to not move in vertical direction. So I'm gonna restrain those again in based on your case, you can assume what you want to win and also restricting the rotation of this hammer so it's going to hit straight like a bullet in a cyclic mode. now i'll go back and i will define increase the total time for the simulation again explicit as i told you in many lectures or courses this is a very long time to simulate for bigger problems so again you have to see if you really want to go with explicit or maybe use a standard or implicit analysis again standard might struggle because you have rigid body motion here but I will show you how you can do it in this case today. So now I am meshing. I will do again as I told you before. You have to mesh it, and I'm going to mesh it part by part. I'm selecting a appropriate uh, seat size, and then I'm meshing it using plane strain elements. So once I have done everything, I will go back. This is how it looks like. Again, mesh convergence is a big tech topic. I have covered some of those aspects in my course, and you can have a look at that. For mesh convergence today. Now I'll go to the job. I will create a job and let's call it something like 2D impact, repetitive or repeated, something like that, maybe. Yeah. So and then I press OK. Another important thing is I never told you. Uh, I'll go back to edit. Uh, precision always select double precision for analysis and also for full full nodal output precisions because if you have very small or large numbers in explicit you can avoid the errors caused by those numerical issues so now i have started to run the simulation as you see here and i will just wait until it finishes i will speed up the window here as well so that it finishes earlier so it's going on and you can see time increment is around 3.4 to exponent minus 6 so you so it really needs to imp, uh, interpolate when it's using that amplitude function which has only an interval of 0.1 so now i go to the results and i see what happens and you see as expected when it hit the wall it basically hit okay but then after that when it retreated retreats there is no restriction in the x direction so it travels like a rigid body too far away because the pressure remains negative or positive for a longer time of force so force control tests are very tricky to do uh, especially in the context of simulations and you need to really get this data directly from experiment but you see impact is there so what i can do now i can go back and let's say i apply uh, i will kill this job now and i will go and i will convert this pressure to displacement because displacement gives me a better control because when it retreats back it doesn't just go with the force depending on the force 
so I will delete this thing now you see like you can delete any load anytime and I will apply a displacement boundary condition which will have the same amplitude as the side function I showed you so let's give it a value of 1.4 or something or let's say 1.3 although the distance is 1.5 so that is slightly away from the twin okay so now let's run it again and see what happens in this case I will get a very nice thing because you remember this was a sine function like this so it will go and then it will come back and then go then come back and then we'll go and we'll stop somewhere in the middle near to the fall as I showed you in the curve so that's what I have done now it's running fine increment stable increment size depending on the elastic properties density and element geometry is 3.4 3 exponent minus 6 as you see here and now you can see it's working fine and it's going on well and we don't see the hammer disappearing as was the case for the force control touch you can still do that there as well and you can constrain the motion that should not go out to a after a maximum distance of something but you can see here it basically went and hit the ball repetitively we, i don't need to do anything as i did in the previous course i just go to the same model in the step here i can go and replace the step explicit strap with the static general step again you can try dynamic implicit as well if your explicit step is taking too long time but in this case for displacement type condition and simple problem you can use static for standard analysis so again i have to change the total time i have given the time to be 13 i'm using analgium on i have given a very large number of in increments here because my simulation can take a long time and this is the important part Impl standard analysis can even convert in one increment when you give a total step size or increment size of 13 while in this case you have a cyclic curve if you remember so you need to capture as many point in time along the curve so if you have a point let's say at 0.1 and then the next is around 1.0 5.0 then you might miss the some part of the curve and it will just take the load as at that point rather than giving it in the intermediate condition so you need to make sure in such kind of analysis that you are capturing as many points on the curve as possible so in this case in my opinion the reasonable increment initial increment should be okay to be 0 0.1 0.1 while the maximum should not be go beyond 0.1 because my time increment in this curve is a maximum of 0.1 you see here so at least i can get the maximum number of points in my from my amplitude function so that's what i'm doing here so i will define the maximum as 0.1 this is a very important thing for standard analysis because your standard analysis can even converge for more than one or two or three time increment size okay now i have done everything there everything else is the same you can see i have displacement boundary condition with amplitude function here so i will go and and run it meanwhile it's running you see i haven't changed the mesh although i have moved from explicit to implicit so again abacus is not that bad as people say it automatically deals with that and it, it knows that it's an explicit analysis so it's going to use explicit elements and if it's a standard analysis it's going to use standard elements and vice versa so now it's pretty quick as you can see 0.1 is fine as we gave so if we would have given 0.5 it might have gone fine as well but to capture most points in the in the simulation we did that so now again i go back and see my results and what you see here now so it, it's very much the same as you see in the explicit it goes hits it goes back it hits again and then it comes back and then it will stop after a certain time and that's it so i hope this makes sense and this will clarify how you can apply a repetitive impact of an object to something or some other structure 